Welcome to another episode of the Quip Corners Book Corner. My guest author's bio will be right after this. So please join us in the Quip Corner to learn more about her and her book. Welcome to the Quip Corners Book Corner, Holly. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad that we could make this work, you know, finding a date that worked for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> so we're here to talk about your book. Can you tell us why you wrote the book? And then we'll talk about the book some more. Okay. Well, it's a book series. Um, this is a lower middle grade book series. It's mis a mystery series. Um, I started writing it just kind of, I was looking through my grandma Yoder's old recipe cards and I just, we have um, old order Mennonite and Amish in our, my, my kind of my family tree. And my dad was raised Mennonite and I thought it'd be fun to have a main character who is Mennonite and sort of honor that history with including lots of recipes and um, and just having a really lighthearted, um, innocent and fun series for, for kids. So that was kind of what inspired it. Nice, nice. So um, now I'm curious because it sounds like it's a series, but it's a cookbook embedded in it is that what I'm hearing there are well so the first one really does have I think there are about 15 recipes in that one and the mystery is involved with this journal that they find and it has the recipes in it um and most of those are actually my grandma Yoder's recipes some are from other family members as well mm -hmm. um the other books um it's not focused in on that so much and but they still always have normally at least three recipes in the back because they'll mention um, they'll be mentioned through the story. And so okay. those will be in the back. Yeah. Okay. Just before we get into the book again, tell me a bit about the, um, shall I say, parts, recipes or cooking played in your upbringing? Because it sounds like it's important. I, you know, it, it's more that I'm starting now as an adult to really treasure that. And I, I treasure that collection and um, the people like I got really choked up because this week I was trying to, to make some of the recipes from my grandma's cards. And um, I found one that was written, sketched on the back of a old church tithe envelope. And I was like, just picturing her there at church and maybe some, someone brought something to a potluck and she was like, Ooh, that's great. And then she jotted down the recipe. So it makes me feel close to them. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, I actually didn't cook a lot. In fact, when I married my husband, I knew how to make beef stroganoff and chicken curry. And oh. we had that a lot. <laughs> but now I love cooking. I love watching cooking shows in my free time. And, um, so I wouldn't say as much as a part of my childhood as I maybe it, like it would feel idyllic, <laughs> but now it just makes me feel connected to them. Um, mm. My sister and I put together a family cookbook um, and we included like little memories of that person who, who contributed the recipe and like wow. um, just a story to go with each recipe. And that was a lot of fun to do. Well. And only imagine, yeah, that sounds great. I mean, you know, just talking about how cooking was part of it or not that poor a part, it's interesting that in life, there are some things that are taught and some things are taught. Mm -hmm. Yes, because my family did, my, my grandma, whenever we'd go visit, she'd make this big, you know, big feast. And we lived overseas most of our uh, growing up years and so mm -hmm. I would get to see her maybe once a year but it would be this she always made ham like with beer poured over it 
sounds weird, but it's delicious. And um, mashed potatoes and fluff is one of the recipes in the book. Um, and it, it, there's such strong memories for me. And it just, it was how she showed love to us. So I think that's more my experience as other people cooking. So I think it is the caught thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's what it really does sound like. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So can you read something from your book to us, please? Sure. I am going to read um, from a little, from the beginning of the third mystery in the series called the covered bridge mystery. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is chapter one disappeared into thin air. Sadie and I walk side by side on the crunchy dirt path leading to the covered bridge between Mammy Yoder's, Mammy Yoder's house and Andy's bed and breakfast. My cousin walks with bouncy steps, the gauzy strings of her prayer cap dancing a jig above each shoulder to the beat of the nippy morning air. She smiles at me with her best full face grin. I can't help but smile back, liking the way her sky blue eyes sparkle on this dull sky morning. Our clumpy footsteps echo against the wooden plank sides and the tin roof of the covered bridge forming a shelter above us and around us. I belt out aloud, hello. Without hesitation, my echo answers back with a clear, hello. Andy Hannah asked us to pay a short visit to Gross Mommy Yoder, Mammy for short, who's under the weather with a cold. Andy sent along a jar of her homemade chicken noodle soup, a sure cure for any sickness or ailment, including broken legs. Snow spreads like an all-white wedding quilt on the land beside the road. Green threads of early grass sprout through here and there, teasing us with springtime around the corner. Up ahead, the bridge points like an eye at the end of a long telescope toward the fields in the distance and neat square farms lining up in order. We pass a sorry cluster of glossy blackbirds that huddle to the side, complaining in their high-pitched chittering, most likely about the weather. I smile, considering their conversation. Poppy? My cousin's blonde eyebrows bunch together, no doubt wondering what on earth I'm grinning about when neither of us have uttered a word for a solid minute. Hmm? Have you heard the stories they tell about this bridge? Our footsteps squeak against the bridge's ancient timber boards as we enter its covering. Like what? My cape dress, thin prayer cap, and thick tights prove no match for the frigid air. I puff a little, watching my breath invade the cold with a cloud of fog and then disappear. Like sounds and strange things left behind, clothing and food. Well, people tra toss trash all the time. What's so interesting about that? I tug together the front of my black hand-me-down sweater, knit by mom for, our, for my older sister, now long married with babies of her own. Well, it's just, what? I face my cousin, lifting an eyebrow. I perfected the fine art of lifting only one eyebrow, since I know it makes me appear intriguing and mysterious. <laughs> I practice long and hard in the small bathroom hand mirror I use to check that no stray hairs stick out on the top of my head. Things that were found often went missing someplace else. I'll, I can stop there. That that kind of introduces a little bit of the mystery. Nice. <laughs> yes. I'm sure some people will be like, Huh? Something lost here, found somewhere else. And so of or course some people went missing. Yes, that went well, something that got missing here, you know, showed up elsewhere. Yeah. Interesting. So this person who's stealing is is stashing their what they steal at the covered bridge. Mm. Gotta find out why. <laughs> exactly. And find out why would be why those who are watching this video would also want to find out how they can get copies of your book. Okay, yeah. So all the books are available on Amazon. Um, right now they seem to be doing, and I don't know what causes this, but um, at least the second book in the mystery is down like from down from like nine dollars to three fifty. So some of them um, go on sale randomly, but you can buy them individually or all three at a time. So, well, that's good to know. Okay, so you can either get the book set or them individually. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah. Okay, okay. We'll put that information below this video. Um, okay. But I'm just curious, what would you want your readers to take away? from reading one or all three books? Well, the third book especially, so each of them has kind of like a very lighthearted, but also it could be serious. 
lesson that they, the girls learned in their mystery sleuthing. Um, the third one that I read from one of the one of the characters is sort of living in fear mm -hmm. and it's motivating a lot of his, his decisions. And so I think the message that I really wanted to get across to kids and even adults, because it's something I've dealt with, is that um, living and moving in fear just normally leads to kind of this feeling of being trapped. Um, and it's it's an easy thing to say, don't live in fear, because, you know, <laughs> we, we will almost always have something that we're afraid of, but... Mm -hmm trying to actively pursue God in whatever it is that, um, that sort of has a hold of you yeah, uh, and giving it to him instead of trying to, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I get it out all of it. I mean, I, th I think it's okay to do proactive and positive things. If there's something you're afraid of, yeah, like, like if you're afraid of, you know, being, um, kidnapped or something, then mm -hmm. just using wisdom and being aware of your surroundings. And yeah, I, yeah. Talking to my daughter about this recently, but not allowing it to make you, okay, I'm not going to go out at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cage you know, you. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a difference between being proactive with your fear and then letting it sort of lead you to greater fear, mm. um, almost like an isolation in your fear. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so even though that doesn't sound very lighthearted, it's it's addressed in kind of a lighter way because the audience is roughly seven to eleven year olds. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, I like how you talk about the importance of being proactive of that fear, you know, and yeah. doing doing something about it when you can. Um, interestingly, I was talking to um Jill, um, Jill Hansen, she authored a book on emotional intelligence and she was mm -hmm. talking about how some emotions that we think are bad have a good purpose right so she mm -hmm. i think she used fear as an example and she was talking about how sometimes you are going somewhere you've never been before and then you're like what if i get lost what if i run out of gas what if i this what if I that and she was like yeah that fear will then make you plan better and right. make sure you have a map, you have snacks in the car, you know, so yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, and also in the back, there are um, some, some little activities for kids. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I do talk a little bit about some strategies if you're feeling kind of panicked. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, you know, the recipes and some fun, um, crafts that are associated with the story. So uh, those are in the back of each of the books as well. Nice. So, mm. yeah. so it's sounding like a book with a workbook. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's short, but there's probably about seven or eight activities nice. um, each in each book at the end. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you just don't read it and, you know, you get some things to do with it. Yeah. Nice. Well done. Well done. Well, thank you very, very much for joining me in the Quip Corners Book Corner, Holly. Thank you for having me on. This is fun. You're welcome. Well, you take care and God bless. Okay, you too. I will. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi there. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Trying to not have those lights glowing, but I look like I have like angel lights on my head. <laughs> it's we can of, pretend it's part of the aesthetic. Yeah. It's because I'm so holy. <laughs> I know. I mean, you know, why bother with just a halo? Just a halo. You know, <laughs> comes from all directions. I know. I know. All good. All good. Uh, let's just say a word of prayer All right. Right. in Jesus name. Our father and our God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercies towards us. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to meet and to talk about Holy's book. Father, we pray that this video will be a blessing to everyone who listens to it. 
And Father, that as a byproduct, there will be more sales for Holly's books in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you'll guide us in all that we shall say in this video. And at the end of it all, all the glory will be returned to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You ready? Yeah. Am I, is it okay to drink tea? Of course. <laughs> okay. It was fun chatting with Holly about her book. And it's interesting how our family or lived experiences feed into the things that we do. Oh. <laughs> Pun unintended because, yes, you heard us talk about cooking and recipes. Yeah, they, of course, fed into the book. Well, as usual, information on how you can get um, copies of her book or books is below this video. I look forward to reading your comments. And when you buy copies, please leave a review. It always is appreciated by the authors. Thanks again for joining me in this episode and see you in the next episode of The Fred Hall Bye now. God bless you. <laughs>